Hello everyone and welcome to Blackstar Potential. My name is Lee Fuge and I'm here with mgrmusic.com and in this lesson today we're going to round up the end of our three-part video series on rhythm playing. In this lesson we're going to break down five classic riffs and rhythms with all the tricks and techniques you guys learned from part one and part two. So if you haven't already checked out part one on the building blocks of rhythm or part two on the techniques of rhythm, please go check those videos out first and then come back to this video where we're gonna turn those tips we learnt into some classic riffs. The sound you're hearing in this video is coming from the Black Star Debut 15. I've got that amp mic'd up with a Lewitt Audio Condenser mic and the guitar I'm using is my Shergold Provocateur. So the first rhythm we're gonna learn is the classic song Knocking on Heaven's Door. We're gonna base this on the original Bob Dylan version. This uses just four chords. So the chords we're gonna be using are G, D, A minor, and C. So think back now to that first rhythm lesson where we talked about different rhythmic divisions. We're gonna be doing eighth notes for this with a 16th note thrown in and alternate strumming from the second lesson. So the rhythm is one and two and a. So we play this as down, down, down on the one and two, and on the and a, we're doing a down and an up. We're also doing the same rhythm across the three and the four, so it's three and four and a. So in the first bar, across the one and two beats, we're playing the G chord, and across the three and four, we're playing the D. And then on the follow-up bar, for the entirety of the bar, we're playing the A minor chord, so we're doing that little rhythmic pattern twice. On the second loop round of the entire rhythm, we substitute that A minor for a C chord, so it goes like this. So if we put that all together, we've got G, D, A minor, G, D, C. So here is the entire progression. The second classic rhythm we're going to look at is from the ACDC song, Back in Black. This uses just three chords. We've got an E major, a D, and an A. So in this rhythm, we're going to be using some 16th notes ahead of the beat and some rests. So we're starting off this riff by playing the E chord on the one beat. Now you don't want to let that ring, you just want to hit it on the one and cut it nice and short. On the and a three, so that's a 16th note, we're gonna play the D chord. So we're gonna go down, up, down. So it's one, two, and a three. And the next thing we're doing is the A chord on the and a of the fourth beat and the one of the next bar. That takes us into the second bar then. So we've got one, and a three, and a one. So we've got these little rests between you could let the chord ring, but then it wouldn't sound exactly like the track. On the studio recording, there's some little lead licks in there, but we won't worry about those just yet. Let's just focus on getting that rhythm nice and tight. So one, and a three, and a one. So those muted notes there were just to show the beats in the second bar because all you're doing in that second bar is playing the A on the one and then resting until the following one where you're back on the E. So the next one we're gonna do is the Kinks track, You Really Got Me. We're using just two chords for this. We're using an F and a G. Now I played those as power chords there, but you could play them as bar chords if you want to. It's much easier to start with power chords. So if you're new to playing, Try the power chord version first and then graduate onto the bar chord version later on. So this rhythm is straight eighth notes, but we're starting on the and of four. So the initial count in one, two, three, four, we're coming in on the and, and one and two and, and there's a rest there until the next and four. So all I'm doing here is going back and forth between that F and G. On the and of four, I'm playing this F chord here. So one, two, three, four. On the one end, I'm playing the G. On the two, I'm playing the F. And on the end of two, I'm playing the G again. The 
fourth classic rhythm we're gonna do is Should I Stay or Should I Go by The Clash. This uses just two chords. We've got a D chord and a G chord. We're also bringing in this little open string hit between certain chord changes where I'm just hitting the E, B, and G strings as open strings just to help with some transitions. So this riff starts on the and of one. So we're not playing on the one, we're playing on the and with two hits of the D, so it's and two. Then on the and of the two, we're hitting that open string. So one. On the three and four, I'm playing the G chord. Then on the and of four, I'm playing that open again before going back to the D on the next one. One. During the second bar, I'm just playing a muted hit on the two, three, and four. So for this, all you can do is rest your fretting hand across the strings and go. That's two, three, four. The third bar is the same as the first bar, so we're playing that same rhythm again. And then in the final bar on the third beat, this is a little bit of a lead technique here, but I'm doing a quick hammer on from the five to the eight of the E string. So here's this riff all together. One, two, three, four, one. And for the fifth and final one, we're gonna get a little bit riffy now. This is one that you guys requested on the live stream I did ahead of creating this video. And this is the Rage Against the Machine track, Killing in the Name. A few of you guys requested this one, so here is this rhythm broken down too. Now before you start this one, you're gonna to have to put your guitar in drop detuning. That means you detune the low E string a full tone, so it's a D. So your guitar now is tuned D, A, D, G, B, E. This is very important because we're playing some lower notes that we can't access in standard tuning. So because this is a riff, we're gonna be playing a lot more single notes here. We're also gonna be doing some percussive fretting hand mutes, similar to the ones we just did in the Clash riff. So again, if you haven't checked out the second part of the series where we talk about that technique, please check that out and then come back and learn this riff. So if we break this down rhythmically, in the first bar, we've got the open low D on the one. That lasts for an eighth note duration. And on the anda, I'm playing the third and fifth of the A string. I'm playing that as a hammer on as well. In the second beat, I'm doing straight 16th notes. So on the two E, I'm doing two fret hand mutes. So I'm resting my finger across the strings and percussively hitting them with my strumming hand. And on the and uh, I'm doing a hammer on from the three to the four on the D string. So if you put those two beats together, it's gonna to sound like this. The third beat is just gonna be straight eighth notes. So on the third beat, I'm playing the fifth fret of the A string. And on the end of the third beat, I'm playing the top three strings, so the D, A, and D, all open. In drop D tuning, three notes on top of each other is now a power chord. And then across the fourth beat, we've got some more power chords. So on the fourth beat, I'm playing across the second fret here on the D, A, and D strings. So that's now a power chord, so I'm playing that on the fourth beat. And then I'm hitting the third fret power chord with my middle finger on the E. So for E and back to the two. I'm actually, I'm doing that first power chord transition as a hammer on as well. If you can't do the hammer on, don't worry, just pick all three power chords. So here's how that sounds as a hammer on. And if you can't quite get that hammer on, just pick all three. So there's a lot to take in with this riff. So here is a slow playthrough. Break this down with the rhythm in the written section of this and look at the tabs that pop up on screen to really help work out what rhythmic divisions we're doing across each beat. And here's that riff once more at full speed. So there you go guys, there are five classic riffs and classic rhythms using all the techniques you learned in parts one and two of this little rhythm series. So go away now and learn those five riffs and see how you get on. See how far your rhythm playing has come in just a short space of time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. If you did, please let us know down below in the comments what you thought and how you've gotten on with all this new rhythm information. And also if there are any lesson topics you'd like to see us cover on the Black Star channel, please leave them down below in the comments. Don't forget to go check out the Black Star YouTube channel for more free videos like this. There's a bunch of lessons and a bunch of 
sound alike videos and there's plenty more on the way as well. And if you're looking for a guitar teacher in your local area, please head over to mgrmusic.com and check out the huge network of teachers all over the country. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon.